Hi there. All music is built upon the foundations of previous music, whether in concept or structure, or even just the idea of 12 notes in every octave. With that in mind, listen to Crazy Bus. What foundations do you hear? Maybe not much, since the roots are kind of buried, so to speak. So、uh, today, I'd like to highlight these roots, and to do that, we need a quick review of the history of synthesis. In the early 60s, Robert Moog invented something revolutionary an oscillator that changes pitch based on how much electricity you feed it. More electricity, higher frequency. All you had to do next was design a keyboard where each key would generate more electricity than the last, and then you had a playable synthesizer. However, the thing he actually produced was a beast, a fully modular synth where you had to rewire everything to get any sounds at all. But that was fine since there were plenty of cool new sounds to explore. You had artists immediately squeezing amazing music out of these machines, such as Wendy Carlos and her album Switched on Bach. But you also had plenty of people that just wanted to get the coolest, newest sounds possible. However, I'd like to focus on the modular aspect. Every modular synth has individual components that you can add as needed. Most important is the voltage controlled oscillator, of course, but you need an input voltage. While you could just attach an electronic keyboard, that's far from your only option. See the row of blinking lights in this demonstration video? That's a step sequencer, a pretty good option for a looping sequence. But there's another kind of module called sample and hold. With this, you can feed some white noise, thus giving you a random voltage, and then essentially slow down that randomness. Feed that into your voltage controlled oscillator, and now you have a random note playing at a regular interval. It's free melodies, sort of. It's not going to be very good or in tune, but it's more interesting than a single held tone for eternity. And notably, this is exactly what the music for Crazy Bus is. There are three square wave channels available on the Mega Drive. Crazy Bus applies a random pitch to each one and then holds that for a quarter note. I should mention that usually people will find a good selection from this random sample and hold action and then just loop that.、Uh, this can lead to some really cool Detroit techno styled soundtracks. Uh, in fact, you might recognize this philosophy from Streets of Rage 3. Though,、uh, with modular synths, you can still get some you know, knob twiddling synth solos occasionally, like this Aphex Twin deep cut. But the beauty of Crazy Bus is in its purity. You get the full package of random values, no looping. I'm going to use VCV Rack to recreate the soundtrack just to show you how simple and elegant it is. First, we've got to start with the basic voltage controlled oscillator, which is by default just a single pitch, which you can adjust here. Then, VCV has a module that combines the randomness with a sample and hold, which you just need to attach to the、uh, voltage. Adjust this till you get it at a A nice crazy bus of speed. And you've got a third of it right there. So you just need to copy and paste this a few times,、um, adjust the randomness a little bit of each time. And voila, you got Crazy Bus. More or less. I could probably do a bit more adjustment, but this is close enough. Hopefully, with this understanding, you'll think about the rich history of modular synths next time you listen to the Crazy Bus soundtrack. 
you want some more serious exploration of game music, my channel is filled with videos that highlight specific genres in 16-bit games. It's usually stuff like fusion or orchestral though. I'm not sure there's enough to make a playlist of crazy bus styled music. Maybe the name entries song from Sword of Vermilion? Anyway, check these out if you're interested. Either way, thanks for watching.